How's it going everybody? Welcome back to 2A News Now and I really appreciate you taking your time tuning into my video. If you're not already pissed off at the ATF, once I tell you this story, you definitely will be. The ATF's pattern of harassment continues. They're targeting another home base FFL. Tom Harris has been selling guns out of his Louisville, Texas home for 30 years. He is so respected and beloved by his customers that one gave him a kidney, literally, which saved his life. Dialysis wasn't working well for Mr. Harris, who was the owner of Sporting Arms Company, which he operates from a dedicated space in his home. He had only months to live until a 39-year-old retired Marine offered to help. I heard you might need a kidney. I'll get tested, Harris recalls the man saying in 2019. I told him that he and his wife should pray about it first. He said we already have. He was a perfect match, a 7 out of 7. Even if I lose my business, it's allowed me to live in what has become standard operating procedure. Since Joe Biden took office, the ATF is trying to intimidate Harris and other home-based dealers into surrendering their federal firearms licenses. And if he refuses to comply, and he most likely will, Harris will face what ATF calls adverse actions. And what I'm going to tell you next shows how shady, corrupt, and out of control and rogue the ATF is. And you can throw any other adjectives at them as well. ATF dug up procedural errors as far as 2007 to make their current case against Mr. Harris. But the ATF had already told Harris he was cleared of these 16-year-old clerical errors as well as newer ones. And he has letters attesting to this. Unfortunately, none of that matters to the ATF inspectors who recently began persecuting the 61-year-old disabled father of five only to satisfy their supervisors. Newfound zeal for more FFL revocations. They threw the kitchen sink at me after they cleared me because their bosses weren't happy with it. Mr. Harris said last week, they're trying to intimidate me into surrendering my FFL. Harris has an industrial engineering degree and a master's in management. He worked as a senior director of Northern American Operations for a large tech company while selling guns on the side, often putting in 100-hour weeks. He employed several off-duty local law enforcement officers to help with sales. I started selling guns right when the Bill Clinton administration started. He describes his gun shop as general purpose. Since he has been in business for so long, he can buy direct from companies like Colt and Smith & Wesson. And he's a master Kimber dealer. Harris estimates that about 40% of his transfers are wholesale to newer dealers. He said most are gun show guys. Today he's one of the largest home-based gun dealers in North Texas. He has more than 10,000 customers across the country and has sold more than 184,000 firearms. Mr. Harris has never had any serious discrepancies during previous ATF audits. Other than his penmanship, Harris now qualifies as legally blind. But when his wife quit her job and began helping with the paperwork full time, that problem was quickly solved. Unlike some home-based dealers, gun sales are not a hobby for Harris. They're the sole source of his income. He says his 84-year-old mother is now living with them. And three of his five kids are still on the till in college after an audit last year. Two ATF agents asked some pointed questions about multiple firearms Harris sold to an individual. He said they put the squeeze on him. He said he answered all their questions and gave them what they wanted. One of the ATF officials, Special Agent Aaron Loving, told Harris's attorney he was cleared of any wrongdoing. Harris's attorney documented the conversation in a letter. I actually have a copy of that letter. I'm going to pop it up on the screen for you guys and you can pause it and read it for yourself. But part of it states, Agent Loving has informed me that you are no longer a target of any criminal investigation and there will not be any criminal prosecutions forthcoming. And then the ATF changed their mind. A few months later, Special Agent Loving recontacted Harris's attorney stating, We need Tom to give up his license voluntarily. The bosses up the chain want him to turn in his license or face adverse actions. Mr. Harris recalled his attorney saying, we thought this was all over. Last month, Special Agent Loving and his partner personally served a notice of revocation to Mr. Harris. I also have a copy of the notice of revocation, and I'll pop that up on the screen, and you guys can pause it and read it for yourself if you would like to.
Harris's notice of revocation contains two violations. On 10 occasions, licensee willfully aided and abetted a non-licensee in dealing in firearms without a license as required by the GCA. And the second violation says on 46 occasions, licensee willfully made a false statement or representative without respect to information required by the GCA. Harris has since learned that the individual to whom he sold the firearms is now under investigation by the ATF. Harris said this individual was a customer of several FFLs. The ATF had cleared me of any wrongdoing. They alleged that he aided and abetted on 10 forms. But at that time, the individual was actively being approved for his FFL. All of this was originally approved by the ATF that said on multiple occasions that he followed the regulations. In closing, like other base FFLs, Harris was told that nothing would happen to him if he just surrendered his FFL voluntarily. Also like other home-based FFLs, ATF wanted more than just compliance in his license. They were taking pictures left and right, which Mr. Harris said he knew was inappropriate. They used a scanning app on their phones to photograph the 4473s. And at the end of one session, an inspector demanded a copy of his entire electronic database. And unfortunately, Mr. Harris handed it over. He says he intends to fight this. Mr. Harris also said on a Monday last January, the ATF called and demanded that he get rid of all of his guns by Friday and surrender his license. They said they would be there that Friday to sign the paperwork. He said he knew it wasn't ATF's administrative procedure. He knew it was abnormal. He said he told the agents he wasn't going to voluntarily surrender his license. He said he will not be intimidated into surrendering his license. So there you have it. I know this video is kind of long, but I wanted to get all that information out to you guys. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos. This is just going to continue to happen more and more. And I'm sure it's happened even more, but we just haven't heard about it. And this is another instance that Congress needs to look into. And they need to put a stop to the ATF harassing and intimidating lawful FFLs. As always, I would really like to hear your thoughts about the video in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, or if I gave you some information you didn't know, and you want to help the channel out and help it grow, please take time to like, share, and subscribe, and hit those post notifications. I really would appreciate it. And I invite everybody back to see my next video.